It's been eight years since Bantamweight Jamie McDonald's last defeat. In the 19 fights following that decision loss to Lee Haskins, McDonald regrouped and won two titles, including the WBA Bantamweight title, which he successfully defended five times. Had Tomoki Kameda not been forced to vacate his WBO belt, McDonald, who beat Kameda twice, would have that one too. McDonald's reign has mostly been unheralded and underrated, which is unfair because it's promotional and sanctioning body drama, not the men across the ring from him, who have prevented the fighter from holding three major Bantamweight titles. But it sounds as if McDonald has finished carving out his legacy at 118 pounds. His next bout, the fight for the WBA Bantamweight supremacy against American Rashi Warren, will be his last in the division. McDonald is moving up to Super Bantamweight. A look at McDonald's frame helps explain why. At 5'10", his 30-year-old body is bursting at the seams. Not having to cut the final four pounds to make the Bantamweight limit should allow him to leave less of the fight on the scales. But there's a price to be paid for moving up. If McDonald wants to replicate the success he's had at Bantamweight in his new division, he's going to have to tangle with the likes of Scott Quigg, Nonito Donaire, Hugo Ruiz, and Guillermo Rigondeau. McDonald has been outspoken about his desire to hand Rigondeau his first loss, rightfully believing a win over the Cuban would bring McDonald more acclaim than everything he's done thus far. It's a dangerous fight for McDonald, especially since the risk of fighting El Chacal so greatly dwarfs the reward. McDonald isn't the first fighter to call out Rigondeau, but will he be the first one to actually back up his words?